The purpose of these videos is to orient you to what components look like and how to act on them. If you haven't yet viewed the Watch Me First video, please do that first as it lets you know what to expect. In this video, we show you what document groups and sets look like, how to create and work with them, and some of the actions that can be taken on them, such as activating them for focus retrieval, querying and generating overviews of other components. So here we are in a Max QDA project, and document groups and document sets are both stored in the main document system over here. Document groups are coloured blue, and they contain the source documents. At the moment we're looking at Teresa, but as you know, we can access other documents in that way. And we can have as many different document groups as we like, storing different kinds of data, as is the case in this project. Document sets, however, are shortcuts. So the documents sitting in the sets, here I've got one set for the male respondents and one set for the female respondents, you can see that there are shortcut icons. So the document relating to Jack is actually living in the Indiana, here it is, but we've got shortcut cut access to that document from the set. Both document groups and document sets can represent whatever you want them to, and they can be created at any time in the usual way, just by right clicking and creating a new document group, and then I can give it a name. I can rename it and move documents around very easily. I can do something similar with document sets. I can create a set at any time. Again, I can name it. And I can drag documents from groups into sets and you'll see that the shortcut is created, but the original remains in the document group. Let's have a little think about some of the actions that we can take on document groups and document sets. First of all, we can activate them. So if I activate a particular document groups, the Indiana document group, for example, then all of those documents turn red, telling me they're activated. And now anything that I do will be focused just on those activated documents. Just to illustrate that, I'm going to do a word frequency query. I'll run it using the standard options, and you can see up here that it's only going to focus on the activated documents. So I can click OK. And now all of the words that it, it has found are only in the two documents I had activated. So activating allows us to focus attention on the contents of any particular document group, or indeed any particular document set. So what I'll do now is show you that for an interrogation based on document sets. I'm just going to unactivate first of all, and then I'm going to activate those two sets I had previously, the male and the female set. I'm just doing that by clicking on the round circular button here, and I can double check that it's worked by opening up those two sets and making sure that they are red. I'll just activate a code as well. Let's say that I'm interested in all the day-to-day -day issues. I can activate that top level. And because I've got my Retrieve Segments window open, now what I've got here are all of the coded segments relating to any of the activated codes amongst the documents that I asked for. So that will be any men and any women. But if I want to make a comparison based on those document sets, then I can do a different interrogation. The one I'm going to show you is the code matrix browser and you can see that I'm going to choose document sets. It's going to focus it just on the activated documents and codes and when I click OK you'll see that I've now got a comparison of men and women based on the individual codes that I asked for. There are various ways I can change the display in this view. I'm not going to show them all to you now but I will just show you that I can change into numbers so that now I can see the number of coded segments in each intersection. And I'll also show you that when I double click on one of those numbers, the retrieve segments window in the background changes to show me just those four coded segments 
to the education code amongst the male respondents. I'll just finish up by showing you one other thing that I can do based on a document group or a document set, which is to generate overviews. I'll just deactivate again, and now I'm going to right click just on the male document set, and you'll see that there are lots of different overview options here. If I ask for an overview of coded segments, for example, then in this view, in this floating window, I get every single coded segment amongst the male respondents. So if I just quickly scroll down, we should see that it's only George, Jack, John and Vincent. There are no female respondents in this view. I can do something similar based on any of my document groups. For example, if I want to focus just on those respondents who come from New York, I can right click and ask for any of these overview windows. I'll just go for memos for now. And now it's showing me all of the memos that have been created within or linked to any of those documents that belong to the New York group. This video has given you an overview of what document groups and document sets look like and some of the ways that they work and can be acted upon.